God bless you. Turn around just while we acknowledge each other in the house. God bless you. As we welcome people watching live stream. And can I have my readers to come to the front? God bless you. Praise the Lord. God bless you as you get comfortable. Our first three days, Deacon Chris. Morning, church. Morning. Blessing to be with you today again with you all this morning. Um, just a few words about the youth. We've got um, obviously our youth night, uh, Wednesday, 7 p.m. to uh, 8.30. They're going to be doing something next Sunday, so we've got to prepare something there. Um, also, we've got a youth social next Sunday where we're going to be going crazy uh, quest. So if anyone wants to attend, let us know and we'll put their names down or we'll speak to Pastor Dom. I think there might be one or two spaces left. So if they do want to come, so if any of your children want to come, let us know and uh, yeah, we'll put their names down. And, but yeah, big things are happening with the youth. So yeah, we're, it's, it's all going really well. Um, so today I'm reading from uh, Revelation chapter 1 verses 10 to 13. I was in the spirit on the Lord's day, and I heard behind me a loud voice as of a trumpet, saying, I am the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last. And what you see, write in a book and send it to the seven churches which are in Asia, to Ephesus, to Smyrna, to Pergamos, to Thyatira, to Sardis, to Philadelphia, to Laodicea, then I turned to see the voice that spoke with me, and having turned, I saw seven golden lampstands. And in the midst of the seven lampstands, one like the Son of Man, clothed with a garment down to the feet, and girded about the chest with a golden band. Hello, church. This is Revelation chapters, chapter 3, verse 78. And to the angel of the church in Philadelphia write, these things say, he who is holy, he who is true, he, he who has the key of David, he who opens and no one shuts and shuts and no one opens. I know your works. See, I have set before you an open door and no one can shut it. For you have a little strength and have kept my word and have not denied my name. Praise the Lord. Amen. You can say your reading. God bless Wonderfully read. God bless you. Interesting passages. Amen. From the book of Revelation. The word apocalypse. The word revelation means to uncover something that's been hidden. Amen. Praise God. And how we desire for God to uncover his mysteries. That we can understand the depth, width, length and height of the word of God. And once you come to that place, you're changed forever. You never can become the same. You come out of the cocoon. You become the butterfly. You don't go back to the cocoon. Have you ever seen a butterfly go back into the cocoon? And we say we're Christians, we move on, we're born again, we come out of the waters of regeneration, and you will go back to an old lifestyle. The butterfly doesn't go back to the caterpillar. You get that when you get home. Our minds has to change. Interesting passage we read here from the book of Revelation, two passages here. Uh, the first one's from chapter one, it speaks about the seven stars, it speaks about the seven golden lampstands, it speaks about Jesus Christ being in the midst of them, moving around them, and they're representative of the, the seven angels, or seven stars represent the seven angels, and the seven angels are representative of the overseers of the seven churches. And the seven candle uh, sticks are, represent the seven churches, lamps represent the seven churches. And what it says, God is he's moving within the midst of them. In fact, he holds them in his hand. He's in control of everything that happens, he's in the midst. And we truly desire him to move within us, not just objectively, but subjectively, to be centralized in our lives that changes everything. Then by chapter three, this statement is made. Uh, John, give it, given to John to give to the churches, which includes you and I, because those seven churches are representative of different epochs of the churches. They're also representative of different geographical churches of the world, which includes you and I. Anyone comes under the name of Jesus Christ is part of the church, his church, his body. It's not the building, it's the believer that makes the church of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. But in Revelation, I just want to touch upon these few 
two verses here and just reflect on them this morning. So when you go back home, you go back and reflect here and think, how do I apply these passages? How do they relate to me and how to make it a reality in my life? Not just words, not just knowledge, but a reality, a way of life. You know, the, the, when people try to do things in life, to be successful, you've got to make it a way of life. It's not just a part-time thing. For example, if someone wants to lose weight, it's got to become a lifestyle, not just a momentary thing. So we go into these diet plans. No sooner do you lose the weight, soon after you put double back because it hasn't become a lifestyle. And when we're growing God, we have to make it a lifestyle. It's a way of life. It's a moment to moment as we breathe, as we exist, reflect, and we live according to the statutes and principles of the Word of God. That is where the empowerment is. And that's one I'll drop into your spirit today. So you can leave here encouraged, excited. Praise the Lord. And don't return back to the caterpillar. He says, and to the angel of the church in Philadelphia. Philadelphia means brotherly love. And there was one of the churches he didn't actually rebuke. He commended them for even though they're weak, he says they held on to their faith. Because when we're weak, that's when we're strong in him. Praise God. He says, these things says he who is holy, he who is true. He who has the, the key of David, he who opens and no one shuts, and shuts and no one opens. Praise the Lord. When God does something, you cannot revert what God has done. If you recall when God blessed Israel when they left Egypt, and Balaam called, Balak called Balaam to curse Israel, it was impossible for Balak, Balaam to curse Israel because God had blessed them. Because the, Abraham, the, the blessings of Abraham are ours. And Balaam said to Balak, how can I curse those whom God has blessed? How can I curse those whose Yahweh has blessed? I cannot reverse that blessing. I cannot ride, supersede, go above what God has done. And when God has blessed you, come hell or high water, no one can do the contrary. If you keep yourself under the covering of God. You know when it's raining outside and we have some people carry umbrellas. Some people forget their umbrellas, just walk in, in the rain, and they get wet. But the one under the umbrella, the wet rain doesn't impact them, affect them, because they're under the umbrella. So if you don't have the umbrella of the Word of God, don't be surprised if the forces, the powers that be will impact you and have an effect of you. You need the umbrella of your faith to cover you from all the onslaught of what's happening around the world, the, the tempest, the storms, the turbulence. We need to be carried in Christ. Amen. Praise God. Then he says this. This is the profound thing here. I know your works. God knows everyone here and everyone watching home and everyone all over the world knows what we do, what we've done, and what we intend to do. That's amazing. You don't even know what you're going to do, but God knows what you're going to do before you know what you're going to do. See, I have set before you an open door. Wow. Wow. And no one can shut it. God's promises, God's words for, for you, no one can take them away. He says, no one can shut it. For you have little strength, for you have a little strength, have kept my word, and have not denied my name. And that's quite challenging. It's challenging to be, to actually not deny the name of the Lord. Because we deny him in many different ways. Not just what we say, confess. By a lifestyle, sometimes we deny him. We reject him. When we do the contrary, when we conflict with his will for our lives, we're denying him. That's why Jesus said, not my will, thy will be done. He wanted to do something else. He wanted a different outcome. Even Jesus, who is the word of God, who takes away the sin of the world, who's pure without sin in Gethsemane, he came to a challenge, a crossroads. And he's struggling within himself. And he said, if possible, take this cup away from me. He raised the prayer to the Father. But he concluded by saying, yeah, but not my will, thy will be done. Sometimes we want it our way, but sometimes God wants it his way. And his way in the long term is better than our short term satisfaction. Praise God. But I want to just focus on this, on this point of this door that is open for each one of us. Just because we're in a building does not mean, don't make a false assumption, that you've gone through the door. Narrow is the way that leads to life, and wide is the road that leads to destruction. Don't assume because we read the Bible, uh, the devil knows the Bible. Yeah, he can quote it better, better than you, and he's had longer experience with it. He quoted it 
He quoted the word to the word. He knows the Bible. He knows how to use it. He knows how to manipulate the Bible. He knows how to manipulate truth to get an advantage over people who are short-sighted and don't have a spiritual disposition to desire God. Yeah? He knows how. He knows from the beginning. Well, you see the Garden of Eden. He was cunning in all the other creatures. And he spoke to the woman, then the woman spoke to the man, and then it was all history. We're here. Yeah? So don't make assumptions of things and don't take things for granted. Make an effort to become the best version God wants you to be in yourself. He's going to help you with it, but he co-works with us. And he wants us to take this journey, praise God. And so there's a door being opened for us. But we ourselves, we, we can only make that decision. We ourselves can desire. We can ourselves put ourselves in that advantage position to enter that door, come through that door, and everything changes. Do you know the story of C.S. Lewis, the lion, the witch, and the wardrobe? You see the wardrobe in the room? It was just a normal wardrobe. It was just a wood. But when the children went through, opened the wardrobe, stepped in, it was a different realm, different dimension. Time change. Dimensions change when they decide and went through the wardrobe. And the cross represents that wardrobe. When you go through the door of the cross, everything changes. A new world. You become a prince and a king. In the name of the Lord, hallelujah, they were, they were royalty when they stepped to, when they came into Narnia and the wicked witch was defeated. There were princes in Narnia and we have the, 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 the prince of darkness defeated and we've come into our own Narnia space in the kingdom of God, represented the kingdom of God, hallelujah. And things change, your outlook is transformed. And that's what God offers, that door of stepping through and never being the same again. A new realm, new dimension. Hallelujah. It's a toy. It's a warp. It's something changes. And you know it. If you've experienced it, you know it. Because when the children came back, they asked the question, has anyone else been there? And the response is, you'll know if they have been there. Because their, their attitude is different. Their outlook is different. You know if they have been to the Narnia, to the kingdom. But if they had that experience, they walked through the cross, the door of the cross. And they will never be the same. You know, you, they have the traits, they have the characteristics, they have the mindset. Hallelujah. It's powerful. But there are different types of doors. Today, you've, how many doors you walk through today in your, in your morning? Through your maybe bedroom door, living room door, kitchen door, front door, <laughs> car door. Sorry? What's that? Bathroom door. Thank you. You walk through doors to come in here. But interesting, something about doors, the way you approach them is different. Now, I've got a few video clips just to show you, just to get you thinking about things, because this is the attitude we have when we're going through doors. Okay? I just play them as I've sent them to you. So I've just put them on the hood, just and pause as I speak about it. Yeah? This is this one type of door. You just put it on. Okay, look at that, a revolving door. Life characterized in this way, you go around in circles. You start and you end up back where you came. And that's characterizes many even Christians. They haven't progressed, moved forward. And people in the world do not move forward. Look, they still go around there. Put, stop it, please. Yeah, go around revolving doors. How many of our lives is characterized by these type of doors? How many of you are still living in a place, going around in circles? In your mind, you haven't got away from it. And there's triggers that bring you back to that place. A conversation, a person you've seen, a situation, a scenario, it gets you right back to that place because you haven't let go. Or that thing has not let go of you or you have not let go of that thing and you're going around in circles. Isn't that a prison? No progression? You end up back where you started from? The next one, just very quickly, this is the second one. We should take this, this one slowly. Security just... videos reveal what? incompetence as much as dishonesty.
Now, this chap, he wants to rob this bank. The safety shatter comes up screen. He panics and he starts running out. But he doesn't think the mechanism of the door. The door's open. He thinks the door opens outwardsly and he's pushing, he can't get out. Because the door pulled forward and then come out, but he f doesn't realize you've got to pull it to go out. He's stuck there. And that characterizes much of our lives. We're pushing against something that really means a step back is a step up for something greater. But we try and force our way through. And we've got to no avail, we don't get anywhere. Because the, the, our mind, we're not thinking, we're not rationalizing. He's doing the wrong thing in the first place. But he could have got out there easy had he thought, hold well, on a second, I, just, I came pushed it in together and I just put it out to get out. <laughs> trapped. And sometimes we're trapped in our imaginations and we cannot move forward. We become prisoners again of false perceptions of reality or the reality we have created. We, we have a narrative and we want that narrative to fit our pigeonholes. And we won't listen to anything else because we've decided that's the route, the direction. I, that's, no one can convince me otherwise because I've made my mind to go down that direction. And it's detrimental to us. And it's painful. Pain. The thing is, people, more, what I've discovered in life, people do not try to be happy. They just don't want to have pain. It's not about happiness. It's about not having pain, not being hurt. And so it's a way, a way of expressing, saying I want to be happy means I don't want to be hurt. Yeah? And there's a way to come to that place, not just to be hurt, but to have, not just be happy, but have joy. The joy of the Lord is our strength. The joy that no one will take away from us. Let's sit to the, do you want to carry on this journey? Let's go to the next one. Then you have another type of door that opens outwardsly. You just push it and you go out. Praise God. Hallelujah. To move progress. But God has provided a door for us that is always open. And the last door I want to show you type. There's many types of doors. Yeah? Okay. There's a, the, the, but the last door is, this, is what we call, just put it up for a second. Straight simply. It's a sliding door. As you approach it, it opens for you. Yeah? You can even close your eyes and move forward. It's going to open for you. It opens going in, and it opens coming out. Hallelujah. But all these doors have something in common. They open. They need some kind of manipulation to, act, to be activated. But the door that God offers you and I is an open door. Hallelujah continually open that no one can close apart from your own imagination praise God apart from yourself no one can close apart from yourself hallelujah praise God and that door is interpreted to not just be a door an intimate object but it's personified as a person Jesus said this in John chapter 10 verse 9 I am the Door. Now it's interesting because he tells the Philadelphia church that there's a door open for them in the church and that door is Jesus Christ. And the assumption is that we have already passed through that door. Yeah? The implication is he speaks to people and he says, look, you continually on a moment to moment daily basis, you have a choice. You can decide to continue, to continue your journey or come out of that door. It's your choice. The decision, when you're in that door, in that new Rome environment, your decision making is completely different from being outside the door. I wish I'm, I don't want to take it too deep. It's a Sunday morning, we just woke up. <laughs> but when you're in, within the door, the decisions you make are completely different when you're outside the door. Because outside the door, you function in the body and in the soul. In the door, you function in the spirit. Your attitude is completely different where you're within than you're without. And it's something for us to examine ourselves in ourselves, in our hearts, to see where we are in relation to God's bigger plan and 
eternal purpose and vision for us because we have a vision, but God has greater plans for us. Amen. Our visions are limited. We limit our visions in, the, in relation to the capacity, the things we feel we can do in our own strength. But God is saying it's not based on your strength what you can do. It's based in my presence in your life that changes everything. My presence changes everything. Amen. It's not determined by your education, by your intellect, by the people around you, by your friends, by your family, by your ancestry. They don't matter to me. What's important to me, you can be the weakest person in the world. Just have me in your life and things will be transformed. You can be the, the, we, the, the poorest monetary person in the world. Just have me and you have everything. Which is so profound. Hallelujah. No one can block your passage through the door apart from yourselves. Know that. Put it in your spirit. Put it in your mind. Put it in your soul. No one can block your passage apart from yourselves. No one has that power. The devil doesn't have that power. The government doesn't have that power. No one has the power to stop you stepping from one realm to the next in God. No one has that power. Amen. Hallelujah. God's given it and trusted it into you. But you can be your own enemy. You can self-afflict yourself and block your passage from fully realizing what God has for us. God has joy. God has so much blessings for us. But we sometimes sabotage our journey. Because we listen to the wrong voices. Hallelujah. And I want to take a few, just a few thoughts of the type of things that stop us from going through that door. Hallelujah. And the door is Jesus Christ. And the, the prerequisite to go through that door is dealing with self. Deny yourself, take up your cross and follow me. Self is one of the obstacles that we need to overcome to come through that door. Hallelujah. Living and existing is one thing. Having life is something completely different. Yeah? Something completely different. Lack of faith can block us progressing. Doubts. Hallelujah. Doubts block our passage through the door. Hallelujah. Praise God. And we have to... Cultivate that faith, increase the faith. And how do we increase the faith? Through the word of God. What you're doing today is increasing your faith. You're stoking the fire of faith. You're increasing that faith. You're helping yourself grow. And more so, when you take this away from here and you continually reflect and meditate on it, that even strengthens it more and encourages it more. Hallelujah. And helps it grow. That's why Paul tells the, the, the Roman church, chapter 10, verse 17, how... How does faith come? He says, uh, so then faith, how does it come? By hearing and hearing by the word of God. We've got to be in the word of God. It's the same you eat different types of food to get different nutrients, get your energy. When you're in the word of God, it's empowering, it strengthens you. And it should be on a daily, daily basis, which is very important. Another thing that blocks us, stops us coming through the door is disobedience. We disobey the things of God. God has the best intentions for you. Hallelujah. But what we do, we, have, we, we, we script our own path. We, we define our own values. And we think things are more important than what they are. We prioritize the wrong things. We put other things before the important things. We put less things that are insignificant and not important at all. We put them as important things. Hallelujah. And we put it above what God wants for our lives. God wants the best for everyone here watching me, listen to me, live stream or watching. Everyone, God wants the best for each one of you. You're a prince, you're a queen, you're a king in his kingdom. Amen. Hallelujah. God has the best for you. You cannot, there's, there's, no, there's, there's nothing, you cannot substitute anything for peace and joy and health and well-being. And that's our portion in God. But when we do our own thing, carve our own d destiny, we're, we're missing out the best things for us. Because God, God, God has a better destination for us than we have for ourselves. I wish I'm speaking to some. That's why in Deuteronomy chapter 28 verse 2, he sets down the conditions. And that implies free will, a choice. He puts before the people blessings and curses, life and death. He says, look, you make your choice. And it's not because I want you to be cursed. It's not because I want you to die. I want to safeguard you from that. That's why I'm saying I'm giving you a safety uh, 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 risk assessment, if you like, like, and trying to protect you, showing you what's good and what's wrong. 
Yeah? And so he sets out this in, in Deuteronomy 28, verse 1. He says this, now it, should come to, it should, and he said, now it should come to pass, if you diligently obey the voice of the Lord our, your God, to observe carefully all his commandments, which I command you today, that the Lord your God will set you high above all the nations. So the commandments, what are the commandments? Well, the commandments are defined from what Jesus said. It simply ends up to be one commandment. All the commandments find their meaning and expressions in the one commandment that Jesus gave. He says, a new commandment I give to you, that you do what? That you love one another as I have loved you. By this all will know you are my disciples. Wow. What's the implication of loving each other as he has loved us? Meaning in a sacrificial, loving way, considerate way, preferring each other before ourselves, Becoming selfless kind of love, not selfish love, not a conditional love, but loving in spite and not because. That's the kind of love that embodies, embraces all the commandments. Find their meaning and expression for what Jesus said. Because without him, we can do nothing. He has to be central in that. Hallelujah. We need to prioritize him in our life. That changes everything, praise God. Then he goes, so what is the outcome of doing this? The outcome is this. Verse 2. I'm not a partial person. I don't care the capacity relationship in my life, whether you're my mother, whether you're my father, whether you're my sister, whether you're my brother, whether you're my friend, whether you're my neighbor. I love people in spite, with no condition, as long as we adhere to the principles of things of God. When we violate them, God tells me, you've got to move on. You cannot, you cannot be in a place that conflicts with growing in God. And you don't serve anyone. If you consider, you, 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 you empower people, if you let them, if you don't make that point, So let's see what the word is saying. And all these blessings shall come upon you and overtake you because you obey the voice of the Lord your God. You want to be blessed. Don't obey Joe Bloggs' voice. Don't obey invo- this, this person, your friend's voice. Obey the voice of God. If your voice conflicts with the things of God, get out of that situation. Because you're not going to be blessed. And you will damage yourself and you will damage everyone else around you. Hallelujah. Praise God. God wants everyone to be blessed. He wants to be selfless. Selfless. When you start saying, I'm a victim and I'm this, what's happened? Your ego has risen. Your self has risen. You haven't denied yourself because when you say I, Apostle Paul says, not I. I know Lord. It's not the I. It's Christ who lives. It's about Jesus Christ. What would Jesus do? St. Augustine, when, before he came to the Lord, he had a lot of relationships with many women. And one day when he came to the Lord, he saw a former um, a person he was in relationship with coming across the road, one of his mistresses. And she recognized him. And she called out, she goes, Augustine, Augustine, it is I. And he turned around and says, but it is not I. <laughs> you can't live two worlds in the same time. It's not I. If you spit at me, and I say, oh, how do I turn the other cheek? If you slap me and I retaliate, how? It's, it's I. What would Jesus do? Food for thought. Think about it. It is not I. It's Christ who dwells within me. Praise God. So disobedience, it blocks us from coming through. What else blocks us? Unforgiveness and bitterness. Forgive us our sins as we've forgiven those who trespass against us. In Ephesians chapter 4, verse 31 and 32, it says this, Let all bitterness, wrath, anger, clamor, and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. And be kind to one another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, just as Jesus, God in Christ forgave you, praise God. Hallelujah. The other thing that blocks our passage, distractions and worldly desires. When the sower sows, it falls on thorny ground. All the... Things in the world distract us, take us away from God. We prioritize the things of the world above God. And that's why Jesus said, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and everyone else and everything else will be added unto you. Everything else we need for us, uh, uh, safeguarding, our stability, our growth, and our development move forward will be added unto us. It's the byproduct 
of serving God or loving God and living according to his principles and statutes. It changes everything. When Christ is born in your life and established, everything you need will be gravitating towards you. When Jesus was born in Bethlehem, the house of bread, what happened? The Magi came and they brought him gold, frankincense, and myrrh. God has all the gold in the world belongs to God. All the silver in the world belongs to God. All the riches of the world belongs to God. The world and everything in it belongs to God. Psalm 24 verse 1 says this. It says this. The earth is the Lord's. What was the devil going to give Jesus Christ? He already had everything. He's a liar. He's been a liar from the beginning. He says, all, all these kingdoms I give to you, they don't belong to you. And if Eve would have realized that, we wouldn't have been in this predicament we are now. I'm, you're going to become like God. Hold on a second. Look at my reflection. I am like God. I'm the reflection of God. You're giving me what I already have, which is the biggest lie. The earth is the Lord's, and it's all its fullness. The world and those who dwell therein belong to God. Maybe they don't agree with him. Maybe they don't respect him. Maybe they don't love him. But it's by virtue of his, his will and his grace and his benevolent love that we can exist. Amen. We don't always get it right. No one's perfect. But it belongs to God. Amen. Hallelujah. So if you want to be enriched, to be blessed, to prosper, to be a trillionaire, God will make you a trillionaire. But when he knows, you know how to use that, divide it rightly in a godly way, God will give you riches untold. He gave Solomon all the riches. Solomon is the richest man who has ever lived and existed. He went, of course, mind you, sometime. Especially when he had 700 wives and 300 concubines. <laughs> but he'll make you, doors will open that no one can close. We're taking rubbish when we're missing the treasure because God has greater plans for you than you have for yourself. I'm telling you, this one, they'd be ruined the word of God. This is not 2.4 sermon. Go away and tickle your ears and go, we had the little ritual. It's not a ritual, it's a way of life. It's seriousness. The gospel is serious because no one knows what the next one brings. Cyprus was threatened last week by Iran, the country I was born in. Are we having a laugh? It's a joke. The world is in disarray. No one knows what's going on. And we're playing little parties. And we're supposed to be the light of the world. Worldly desires. The wrong place to the wrong place. It's no problem to have joy. No problem to have riches. No problem. I want you all to be wealthy, well-being, but in the right way. In the godly way, God first, centralized, changes everything. I've seen some uh, celebrities recently come to the Lord. And they, on their podcast, they're speaking about Jesus Christ. Amazing. B because the world needs Christ. Hallelujah. Jesus is the answer. It's not about hate, it's about love. Hallelujah, praise God. And this is what it's about. So I'm just giving you keys to help you on your journey as you continue in the Lord. Praise God. Hallelujah. Negative influences and wrong relationships can stop you going through that door. There would, there's sometimes would-be preachers that don't go through the door because they listen to the wrong voices. Would-be would preachers bishops and pastors but don't listen because to prioritize the worldly things because that's of more value than the things of God hallelujah praise God that's why Paul tells us in 1 Corinthians chapter 15 verse 33 do not be deceived evil company corrupts good habits hallelujah praise God be careful of your surroundings who you associate with very important hallelujah praise God Isaiah 59 verse 2 tells us this is unresolved sin that we need to get right in ourselves. We need to confess before the Lord. Say, Lord, forgive me for this. We might have done something that we haven't really acknowledged and embraced and had remorse for. We say, Lord, forgive me. I come before you. Cleanse me. Transform me. Isaiah 59 verse 2 says this, but your iniquities have, have separated you from your God. And what is sometimes put before ourselves, we put before God, we need to get that out of the way because it's between us and the door that we can walk through and have the joy and everything that God has for us, praise the Lord. And we need to be prepared, lack of preparation. 
Solomon tells us in Proverbs 21 verse 5, the plans of the diligent lead surely to plenty, but those of everyone who is hasty surely to poverty. Plan, make an effort. Laziness is a bad mindset, attitude to have in relation to the things of God. Hallelujah. Simply, all it is simply is about self. That's why in, in Luke chapter 9 verse 23, this is what, how Luke um, records it when Jesus says to deny yourself. He says this, then he said to them all, if anyone desires to come after me, watch this, let him deny himself and take up his cross daily. Not just a one event, but every day we need to examine ourselves. Am I taking up my cross? Am I examining myself? Am I putting myself in, in the light of the word of God? Am I holding myself up in relation to the light of the word of God? God's standards, not the world's standards, not my friend's standards, not even my standards, but the standards of God. Am I putting myself in that light and examining myself in the last, and measuring myself according to Jesus Christ? Not to somebody who's done something way would have gone off the rails, but to God. And that's the measuring, that's the standard we measure yourselves upon I wish I'm speaking to someone and it's about Jesus it's about you and not about you and me I'm sharing the word of God don't be offended by me it's between you and God and I don't get offended by you it's between me and God I never I never looked at blame game said oh, I'm in this situation because of this person or that I don't look at that I look at myself Lord what can I learn from my experiences in life I've been through some very uh, great adversities in my life Many times. But I never blame anyone. I take responsibility for myself. I say, Lord, what can I learn in this situation? Because we're all on a journey. We're all pilgrims in this world. Hallelujah, praise God. It says daily and follow me. He says this. This is the Greek. Gath imeran. Gath imeran. He says every day you need to make that decision. Restore. That's why to one of the truths says you have lost your first love. What does that mean? First love, love is Jesus Christ. You've taken your focus of Jesus Christ. And when we put it back there, you, you will never regret it in your eternity. You'll never regret it to be in the Lord with the Lord. Praise God. So that door is open. And what is that door? That door is Jesus Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. In John chapter 14, verse 6, Jesus made this profound statement. He said to them, Jesus said to him, I am the way. The truth and the life, no one comes to the Father except through me. I am that door. Amen. Hallelujah. But the devil, the world, wants to take that away from you. Wants you to, because the devil cannot close the door, you know what the devil does? Closes your eyes. What the devil does, it takes your focus from the door. That's where the problem is. And that's what we're dealing with in the world today, getting people just to refocus. When the door, when Peter was on the waves walking towards the door, the waves got his attention. Your friends, people around you get your attention. Praise God. You've got to be focused and God will bless you more than you and God blesses us more than we can ever imagine. It's not without its challenge. Not without adversity, but when Christ, I know my confidence is knowing that Jesus is in the bulk of, boat of my life, holding the steering wheel, that's, that's all that matters for me. I don't want to be in a situation like in Revelation chapter 3 verse 20, when this situation happens. And this is what I'm speaking about, watch this. Jesus, behold, I stand at the door and knock. Hold it, he sta the door is standing at the door and knocking, hallelujah. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come into him and dine with him and hear with me. Hold it a second, God wants you to go through his door, but yet you're not only outside the door, but he's coming to you now saying, look, you open your door. And, and because you don't come to me, I'm coming to you. That's the love of God. And who's he speaking to? One of the seven churches. That he's moving within the midst of the church, but he's not within the believers in the, in the centralized in their lives. And when God is centralized in your life, all things are possible unto him and her who believe. We're chasing the carrots of the world. And God has so much more. And I know that I'm... I'm the evidence for myself, not for you, for myself. I know I can't divulge everything about Michael. It's not about me, it's about Jesus Christ. But I'm telling you, I'm the evidence for myself that I know 
if it were not for the Lord, I couldn't be standing here. Amen. Hallelujah. And you know, I want to finish on these last thoughts. Because when you decide to go through that door, you give permission to other people to come through that door. I want to finish on these last few thoughts, please. And I pray you, God, please, please reflect on this. I say with love for you. I don't want anything from you. I just want you to build that relationship with Jesus Christ. Be that what God wants you to be. Because I've seen many people, sometimes on the journey, people grow weary. Don't grow weary in doing good. Don't be disheartened. It doesn't matter how many people around you say that conflicting negative things or fall away around you. Don't leave focus because the only hope they have is you carry on on your journey. The only hope the world has is if you shine your light. That's the only hope. Hallelujah. And I'll just finish on the last thoughts. And this regards Paul and Silas. Paul and Silas are in prison for serving the purpose of God. I said on Friday that the world promotes evolution. That's why people are acting like animals. Because if you think your ancestry is an animal, you're going to be an animal because you reflect the characters of the animal. If you're divine, you'll become like divine. If you, if you celebrate your identity as a son and daughter of God, you're going to walk like a king, like a queen, like a prince of God. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise God. And in Acts, they find because they're delivering people, the world doesn't like it. Hallelujah. You cure someone for free, you're going to, you're going to get a problem. They've stopped miracle crusades. They've outlawed them. Legislations against these things. Yeah? But watch this. They're in prison with other prisoners. In the, in the mid the mid prison, no windows, darkness. What do they do? Paul and Silas begin to worship, pray, and sing songs. A Acts chapter 16, verse 25. Watch this. But at midnight. The darkest time of the, of the, of, of the 24-hour day, at midnight, midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God. They weren't gossiping, hallelujah. They, weren't, had, they didn't have a pity party, hallelujah. They were singing, were told, praying and singing hymns to God. And the prisoners were listening to them in the midst of their despair, in the midst of their anxiety, in the midst of their adversity. They were praying and singing hymns and other people were listening to what they were, the, 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 the expression of, of their hearts at that particular moment. And then, verse 26, Suddenly there was a great earthquake so that the foundations of the prison were shaken. And immediately all the doors were open and everyone's chains were loose. The doors were open. God has put before you an open door. It's open and no one can close it. Those doors were open for Paul and Silas, but for everyone else around them at the same time. Hallelujah. And they walked out those doors and many multitudes came out with them because the doors were opened by virtue of the faith and tenacity and faithfulness of Paul and Silas. And your faithfulness will help other people come up the prisons and the strongholds of demonic powers out of those doors to where God wants them to be. So be the reason for people to desire to walk for it to see your, your example. Hallelujah. And your relationship with God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I pray reflect on this word. It's very powerful. Hallelujah. Because even the prison guard wanted to go through those doors. <laughs> you get that later. Even your enemies would want to come through those doors when they see the consistency. It may take one year. It may take ten. It may take twenty. But be consistent. It will change everything. Let's stand together. Praise the Lord.